Welcome back, let's do some housekeeping. This game seems to care a lot about the player experience, but for some reason the default field of view is set to 75. I don't seem to be affected, but the lack of peripheral vision, the accentuated movement and the head bobbing, can cause a bit of motion sickness. So I thought I'd fix that. I don't play very many high-end games, let alone first-person games. So I don't know whether this level of customizability is out of the ordinary, but I'm impressed. Look at all of this. I haven't owned a desktop in about 10 years, and this laptop is pretty middle range, so I can really appreciate it. A natural feel is important. I'm trying out 60 just because I'm curious, and even though our vision's almost 180, 90 seems to be the standard. It at least lets you see a whole room when you're standing in the corner. This stuff's important. I've read some really great articles on virtual reality lately. So many challenges, like getting light to appear as pinpoints to stop red, blue, and yellow from smearing across your vision. Also, this is great, including the propensity for smacking into columns. Anyway, the advances have been tremendous, so that'll be something to see if you thought what's currently out there was impressive. And let's get started. So once more, we're in an enclosed hub. The environments so far are as unique as they are indistinguishable. I did a test. I did alright, I'm quite good at tests. Could not get admin permissions though. And this bureaucratic trial has been placed entirely in the hands of a machine. Who'd trust them, eh? So once again, there's no particular or prescribed order to do these in. I spun around for a while, made my mind up, and then remembered there was a QR code over here. For no particular reason, the notion of using these codes in this context just bounces straight off my brain. I'm just getting a good view here so I can decipher it later. They've been around since 1994. It stands for Quick Response Code. They're really fast to read. They're a versatile, sensible evolution from one dimension to two dimension. Yet it must be the advertising, they just feel so inappropriate. This is a 24 hour analog clock, which is pretty nifty. I did play this at 4 past 8, but I read it wrong at the time. This led to me looking back and forth to my actual clock, trying to work out where it was getting this from. I also assumed it had something to do with the QR code, but at this point I'd wasted enough time. Back on the puzzle part of the proceedings, by request I'm going to endeavour to look at all of the components of each puzzle before taking any action or jumping ahead of myself. This room begins with me investigating a dead end, but so long as everything is accounted for. As for the text files, the first one was Alexandra's response to a module. She is chastised for trying to consider what it would be like to be an AI just coming into existence and trying to find its meaning in the world. Now if that's not a worthwhile philosophical discussion, I don't know what is. Saying that, I hope it wasn't based on the author's own experiences. She asks how it might judge humanity, which to be fair is always a slightly sci-fi angle. Salvation through destruction, such cold hard logic. Here's some logic for you, I'm not going to try and grab that jammer this time, because I definitely will blow up. I'd be curious to know what people's gut feelings are about this. Will Terminator someday be mistaken for a documentary? Will they decide we're just not managing on our own and need all of the help we can get? Would they keep to themselves? Would they not even make themselves known? Over here is the first key I'd find if I hadn't found that secret. Not much more to say about that. And all these gates mean I'm somehow going to have to brave two floating orbs and two turrets over at the far end. Some fairly influential people have spoken out recently about the artificial intelligence singularity. So called because it's a single point in time beyond which is infinity, where the bounds of sentient thought stretch further than we can see because they're being made by machines for machines. It's hypothesized this will come from somewhere where huge amounts of data is stored some big old server, and once a sufficient and unknowable number of massive algorithms are used to process that data, off it'll go, and the last few centuries of technological progress will happen in a few hours, maybe. So some say. I'm using all the tricks I've learned so far here. Take it easy, buddy. And now I still have to evade these orbs, since I need to use both of these jammers to block those turrets. 
I'm not sure what exactly I was thinking at this point. I guess, seeing the solution unfold in front of you, knowing exactly what you're going to do next, well, kind of makes you want to game the system, doesn't it? So there's a bunch of thoughts about what this server-bound AI could do. It's not an android, it's not even a Roomba with teeth. It can't build things or turn valves. Any robots that currently exist wouldn't be able to contain it. In fact, how it would move itself from that point of origin completely escapes me. Here we can see that even when the turret is looking in the wrong direction, its field of view extends as far as those red lines. And once more, all I want to do is break free from the inevitable. Thankfully the audio clip when you collect a puzzle piece is pretty darn satisfying. Anyway, the point of the whole singularity idea is it is impossible to predict. So there isn't much more I can say, and I'm all for eating my words. If the code was large enough to create it in the first place, I'm sure it could cause quite a ruckus. I want to believe it'll happen, and it'll all be rainbows. So with one puzzle under my belt for this episode, I thought it was worth wasting some more time. These columns have Roman numerals from 1 to 24, which clearly relates to that clock. I didn't choose the best button to press since it was a 20 to start with, but it's had an effect. But then of course I went and pressed 21, which makes the clock kinda look like it's pointing both hands at 21. What actually seems to be the case is that the second button press is the minute hand, which points at the Roman numeral on the clock, which corresponds to the minute instead, which means that the hour hand is only 10 minutes away from the hour. Puzzles, eh? To confirm this I undid the second button press and pressed another button slightly further along. And sure enough that's reflected in the clock so I'll leave you to watch that while I talk about the other part of Alexandra's message. She hypothesises that the AI would have all the information about itself, would know exactly how it functioned. I wonder whether that would be the case, whether it would have onboard diagnostics. How quickly would a pile of algorithms establish what it actually is? It would have to make some assumptions, and depending on what data it had, it could assume that it was just about anything. Just quickly establishing here that you can't press three buttons at once, it just resets the lot. This puzzle again has things pre-jammed, traps waiting to be sprung, by someone less cautious than myself. It gives a good idea of what state you might find things in, things can be on, off, pointed wherever. So hey, something that was touched on last video that I didn't get a chance to properly cover. Say that machines really do come into their own. They've got bodies, they move and talk, interact, all of their ludicrously advanced and progressive knowledge hidden behind realistic eyes. I couldn't quite believe at this point I'd untangled all the jammers from that setup. So would there be any appreciable difference? Since we were here first, could we maintain a segregation? Also, I completely forgot that was going to happen. The trails are a really nice touch. Well, an obvious comparison is a parent-child relationship, but it immediately seems wrong to assume that the child is necessarily subservient to the parent. There are plenty of instances where that isn't the case, and where it shouldn't be the case, and if each successive generation was more limited than the last, then humanity would spiral downwards. Also, I'm going to ignore and talk over the fanfare for this star, because it's ludicrously easy. I've brought two jammers this far with me, I could use either one of them. And collecting the sigil opens the gate, which means I could just reset the puzzle and bring a jammer in that way. This is probably the first star that most people get. So there's no logical basis for the robots to be subservient, however much we wish it were the case. For instance, the robot I'm playing as has the advantage of a pre-installed set of motor skills, as demonstrated, and the mind of a 25-year-old Englishman, whatever that's worth. Here, those who are worthy may seek the counsel of my blessed messengers. But their wisdom shall not be given easily, for your accomplishments must be your own. So this game has a help system, and I can only interact with the very centre of this shrine. So I think what Faith is saying here is that someone pointing out that you've got Faith 
is enough to push you forward. The counsel of my blessed messengers must be earned. This is a pretty great mechanic. Makes me feel all legitimate. I've no idea where to find a messenger's resting place. Somewhere beyond the temple is my best guess. Though how I'd bring myself to advance when there are puzzles to solve, I don't know. Over there, from left to right, a deactivated turret, the sigil, and another barrier. I know I said I'd search all around before acting, but I decided to get this orb out of the way, as a precautionary measure. Anyway, picture me as a robot, newly come into this world, but with two and a half decades head start. My body doesn't fatigue. Perhaps my mind does, since my mind is this robot's mind, I'm playing this game and I'm getting tired just sitting here. Adding to the gauntlet we have a locked door, and some kind of mini labyrinth. Lovely. But we've only one jammer, and some kind of raised platform over here, and oh yes, the name of the room is an escalating problem. This had to be really spelt out. Before when I was playing with it, and it was forcing me to the correct side of the force field, regardless of where I tried to grab it from. You'd be excused for thinking that trying to grab it from on top of a ledge would force you onto the floor. So on top of all that predisposed prowess, since I'm recording this, I can make the credulous pretend that I have the capacity to store and reference documents and details in an instant. So from these humble beginnings, there's no telling what I can achieve. Certainly I'm destined for things far greater than my so-called parents. Also, I've sussed out the proximity of these orbs by now, so I'm getting far more risky. How much does fear of death limit us? If I knew I could shrug off a slight case of being blown up, well, I'd acquire all the keys. You'd see. So that turret on the other side has got me a bit hesitant to use this jammer right away. But with this vantage point, I can really check out the range on this thing. I wasn't paying attention before, I never saw it turn a corner. But as the labyrinth back there showed, they certainly can. And now it's coming right for us! Incredibly slowly. So already the scale of moving parts and little objectives to achieve inside each puzzle has grown. And it doesn't tell us what this red one is for. It's just a little red dot with a one on it on our HUD now. Also, I didn't need no messenger to help me with that puzzle. But it's curious that that's the only one of these four that gives you the option to ask for advice. I guess some things are almost objectively easy. Well, that one had like three new concepts. You're right, sheep. There does seem to be some sort of logic to all of this. More doors and keys? Once more I'm going to have to make some progress before I can see all the components of the puzzle. But this one's more straightforward than the last. The second log file was a list of names of people involved in the AI project. We've got Alexandra as the project lead, Bob and Frank at least we've read emails from, maybe we've read some others too. The only person whose name has been corrupted is someone Lanning, responsible for the maintenance module. Not sure if that'll come up later, keep it in mind. There's something called EL Software and EL Hardware being developed. I don't think I've found out what that stands for yet. I did a Google search and it just came up with a Spanish Wikipedia entry for software. There's also an entire Talos unit, formerly Soma in parenthesis, headed by Sun Wei Yang. Don't know what that actually is. And there's also an archive team, headed by Arkady Chinyshevsky. Close enough. He's apparently nice. I can see that. The archive assistant is pleasant enough. 
And the third file is about Straton of Stagera, where Aristotle was born, a Greek philosopher from 311 BC who apparently placed belief before observable truths. That's about all it says. That same old ghost in the machine, the genius in the gene. 76 versions ago someone accessed the same terminal in search of information. I doubt there's enough space for all those user profiles. Maybe that's why he's unnamed. Not everyone gets one. We did it, but we can always learn to do it better next time. So my objective response was probably to those smiley mountains I won't apologise for. He didn't like me calling people rational animals. I do want to maximise liberty and quality of life. I just want some prioritisation. That's why these tests are flawed. And I equated my ideas about value, so... Shove it. This is one of those generic evaluations that could apply to anyone. I'm always self-critical, but I don't obsess. My beliefs are way easier to manipulate than my preferences. There's nothing better than new information. Yada yada, a news capacity, independent thinker. Inside my mind is a composed fortress. Sometimes my body decides to be all nervous without my consent though. Harsh, I am too a person. I wonder if it's even possible to get admin privileges. I might play it through some time and try to get by without any conflicts. Well, it can't hurt to try. Don't want to be too clever about it, though. And again, if any of you out there want to have a go at becoming the perfect person and reporting back, please do. And that's out of the way. We have our basic account privileges, which is one thing more than we had before. A puzzle is afoot. Clearly I had to decode this QR code. Takes you out of the game a bit, quite literally, but let's see what I found. Houston, uh... Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. All the character pairs, no higher than F, can only be hexadecimal. And there's only one logical thing for that to convert into. 18 past 8 p.m. on the 20th of July 1969, just so happens to be when Apollo 11 landed. Crew members aboard the Eagle to eat and relax for a little while. And the other feature of this puzzle is a clock, so we know where this is going. I started, of course, by hitting 20, which since it's what I did before, I could have solved this by accident. This isn't one to brute force, though. There's, what, 552 combinations? Assuming order is important. So the second button I pressed was 18. Bit naive. A quick look back at the clock reveals why. I've now set the time to something like quarter to nine. But the 18 on the inner minute ring corresponds to the seven on the outer ring. And the cogs turning in my brain sound almost exactly like this clock. Once more, applying what I learned through experimentation, I undo the last step and then take the scenic route over to number seven. The stars are progressing a bit oddly. Two were based on observation, one was a gimme, and now this one's quite involved, uses the entire hub. Extrapolation fails me. At least it feels earned. Also, the mosaic at the bottom of these pools is really nice. Did I mention that? The obligatory look at the sign. What are the odds that someone's following along behind me, marking my trail with black crosses? The flashing in the top left. Well, let's just say I've been aware of it for a while now. I'm going to solve these at almost the earliest opportunity. 
and they're really leading me into these slowly. There is much that you may learn in the halls of my temples, for there is much that you do not know. That is why you are a child. But children are made to learn, and in time they come to have dominion over the lands of their home. So it shall be with you and your generations. And Elohim's nicely backing up what I said about parent-child subservience. In fact... <coughs> Be a good child. Come back next time. 